Do you trust your wife? Well, do you? <laughs> it's possible for you to retire for life on... Do You Trust Your Wife? Starring Edgar Bergen, Charlie McCarthy, and Mortimer Snurd. Brought to you by the Frigidaire Division of General Motors and the Frigidaire Dealers in your community. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, the husband, by knowing whether to trust his wife, can possibly retire for life. Yes, our trust fund question pays $100 a week every week for an entire year. And the trust fund winner may return and keep winning an additional year's income until he is defeated. Returning to compete with tonight's winners to try for $100 a week for a fourth year, our construction company technician, Eric Good, and his wife, Helena. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, here is the star of our show, Edgar Bergen with Effie Klinker. Here from Bartlett, Texas, are Mr. and Mrs. Norman Frank. Well, we're very happy to have you with us, Mr. Frank. Would you mind telling us how long you folks have been married? Effie and I have been married two and a half years. Have we, dear? <laughs> well, kiss me. No, wait a minute. Okay. Uh, I, think, uh, I think his wife over here is named Effie, too. Oh. Are you all too tiny, are you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mm. Certainly did better than I did, dearie. Yeah, I think they make a charming couple. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, and you've been married only two and a half years. Tell me, Effie, when did your romance start? The minute I laid eyes on him. No, 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 not just. <laughs> oh, yes. When did you first meet Norman, Mrs. Frank? I had a small hotel, Alamo Hotel in San Antonio, I see. Texas, across from the Alamo. Oh, I see. And uh, I needed a good manager. <clears throat> so he seemed to be the right man. And I told him that I was not interested in him except as a manager. And if I was nice to him, to think nothing of it. That was a sneaky way to throw him off his guard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Norman, what was your answer to that remark? Um, well, I told Effie that I had been a bachelor for 61 years, <coughs> and I saw no reason why I should change now. <laughs> <laughs> you put up a good fight, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> but nevertheless, you and Davy Crockett should both stay away from the Alamo. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mrs. Frank, uh, you were attracted to Norman right from the start, would you say? No, indeed. Mm. I almost fired him. Fired my little Normie? Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, every time I'd look down the hall, yes. I'd see Norman going into one of the rooms to play canasta with three women. Oh, I see. <laughs> my name will be dragged into this thing. <laughs> Shall we get to cards, dear? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and Mrs. Frank, uh, that wasn't your idea of the... Uh, the way a uh, hotel manager should act, is that it? Definitely not, no. no. Mm -hmm. I want him to be nice to everyone, but not to just two or three women. Are you still that generous? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I must remember the Alamo. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Norman, you were a bachelor for 61 years. <clears throat> yes, when did you weaken? Well, Effie was taking a trip. And I drove her to the bus depot. Yeah. And for some reason I can't explain, I suddenly leaned over and kissed her. Uh huh. <laughs> Mrs. Frank, what was your reaction? Oh, I was terribly shocked to be yeah. kissed right in the bus station yeah. with all the people. So, so I felt that I was just a ruined woman. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us all about it, dearie. No. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a wonderful feeling, isn't it? I read a great deal. Oh, yes. <laughs> well. Kids are tired of reading. Yeah. I've worn out my eyes. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what happened when you got back from that trip, uh, Mrs. Frank? Did the romance start to blossom, would you say? Well, yes, we became more friendly. Every day, in some way, we just drifted into marriage. <laughs> Must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I call drifting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've tried drifting into marriage, but I don't know something goes wrong. <laughs> I think my anchor is dragging. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's been 
so long now, my cargo has shifted. All right. <laughs> well, uh, what are you doing in Los Angeles, Mrs. Frank? Are you here on a vacation, I suppose? Well, not exactly. We've been around the world on a good neighbor, Texas, good neighbor tour. Oh, I see. And uh, it was sponsored by the uh, Texas uh, International Council of international relations. Well, now, don't tell me that Texas has its own foreign minister. <laughs> well, what was the purpose of this trip, Norman? <clears throat> well, to say hello from the people of Texas to the heads of the various countries that we visited. Well, I think that's very nice. <laughs> sort of spreading the word about Texas. That's right. <laughs> and the Texas sure can spread it, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember I met a... Well, it's neither here nor there. No, I, uh, Norman, uh, what countries did you visit on this trip? Well, we visited 29 countries, mm -hmm. including Jap uh, Korea, Japan, and India, <coughs> Iran, Turkey, Egypt, and uh, most of Europe. I see. Well, you must have had some thrilling experiences, Mrs. Frank. Who did you get to meet that we might know? Well, we met so many interesting people. Sigmund Ray and his wife and uh, General Lismo. Chang Kai Chek and Madam had us all to tea. Well, Mrs. Frank, uh, <coughs> did you find that people all over the world knew about Texas and maybe they knew some of the fabulous stories you tell about Texas? Yes, indeed. Yes. We were in Valley and one of the hotel clerks told us quite a good joke on Texas we'd never heard. Oh, is that so? <laughs> Was it the one about the midget who played a tuba and how he got sucked in? No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Tell you. you see, he played... Oh, no, 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 uh, no. We want to hear the story that, uh, that Mrs. Frank heard. Oh. Yes. Uh, what was it? <clears throat> there was a Texan went to Kentucky, mm -hmm. and he bragged so much that they took him out to Fort Knox to show him the gold. And they told him there was enough gold to build a fence around Texas. Mm -hmm. So he said, will you build it, and I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, we're delighted to have you as our guest tonight. And having two such wonderful emissaries of good goodwill from Texas has made tonight's show a, a very special occasion, I think, for us. Mr. Bergen, it is special for me. It's Are my you? birthday. Your birthday? Yes. <laughs> Effie, honey, would you mind telling us how many years? Effie, honey, I didn't hear you. <laughs> Effie, how does it feel to meet an Effie who married, uh, made, managed to get a husband? Yeah, makes me so mad. I think I'll go home and throw rocks at my hope chest. I see. <laughs> you have a hope chest? Yes, I have that, but I'm running out of hope. I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been nice chatting with you, and we'll play our little game in just a minute. Right after a word about something really new from Frigidaire. The spotlight is on a completely new idea in home laundry. These exclusive control towers. Control towers atop the new 1957 Frigidaire Imperial automatic washer and electric dryer. They signal in savings that no other washer or dryer in the world can give you. You save hot water up to 1,800 gallons a year. You save detergent as much as two-thirds of a cup per wash load. You save cleaning messy filters, for with Frigidaire float-over rinse, no filter is needed. You save drying time, for no washer spins clothes as dry. And you save your clothes. With Frigidaire rub-free action, even your most delicate clothes are washed clean, fast, ever so gently, entirely without rubbing. Let's prove that. Here is a woolen sock. I'll smear it with molasses. Then, just to rub things in, I'll add some chocolate syrup. Now then, I'll take a fresh egg and put it into the toe. In they go, sock and egg. No blades, no thrashing veins here, just thousands of swirling, churning currents of hot, sudsy water. The result, a bare 20 seconds later, and there's not a trace of molasses or chocolate left on the sock. The egg, just as safe and sound as the day it was laid. And just as fragile, too. 
Yes, Frigidaire exclusive rub-free washing action is thorough and gentle. Now, examine the really smart new Frigidaire sheer look. No matter where you put them, they'll fit in. Look built in. See them at your Frigidaire dealers. The Frigidaire automatic washers and electric dryers for 57. See why you get the best when you buy Frigidaire appliances. Built and backed by General Motors. Mr. and Mrs. Frank, you can win up to $1,200 in cash tonight on your way to our trust fund question. Your first correct answer is worth $100. Your second, $200. Your third, $300. And Edgar, here are the Frank's questions. Will you both please go to the board? Norman, we want to find out how much you know about your wife. Norman, does your wife accept criticism graciously? Does she ignore it or does she resent it? Now, you just write down either accept, ignore, or resent. And Effie, you write down, resent, ignore, or accept. He wrote accept, and she wrote accept. You now have $100. Your next correct answer will be worth $200. The subject of your second question is national emblems. Do you trust your wife? I believe I'll trust myself. All right. For what country is the maple leaf the national emblem? Canada. Canada is right. <laughs> you now have $300. Your next correct answer will be worth $300. <clears throat> the subject of your third question is mathematics. Do you trust your wife? <laughs> you can give her a signal. I have to trust like, myself. Yeah. <laughs> All right. How many degrees in a right angle? How many degrees in a right angle? 60, 360. There are 90 degrees in a right angle. Yes. I knew that. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> Edgar, Mr. and Mrs. Frank have won $300. You may now risk all of it, none of it, or part of it on our board question. But if you lose, what you risk will be deducted from what you already have won. And remember, tonight's top winner competes with our winner from last week for our trust fund question of $100 a week, every week for an entire year. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, do you wish to select a category? A uh, $200 question. And do you trust yourself or do you trust your wife? I'll trust myself. What is the name of the largest lake in Africa? Lake uh, Tanganyika. It's, sorry, it's Lake Victoria. Oh, Victoria. Oh, yes. that's... <laughs> <laughs> and the Franks have a grand total of $100. Now, here is Edgar Bergen with Mortimer Snur. Edgar, meet Mike and Thelma Went. Mr. Went hails from Florence, Colorado, and Mrs. Went's home is Indianapolis. And Edgar, Mr. Went is the chief animal keeper at the Griffith Park Zoo here in Los Angeles. Hello, folks. Welcome to the show. It's Mike and Thelma. Yeah. Mortimer, Mr. Went is from Griffith Park Zoo. Oh, from the zoo, yeah, yeah. Do you know why he's here? Well, they're cleaning out his cage. Oh, no, 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 no. no. No, he's chief zookeeper. Oh, now tell us, uh, Thelma, what's it like to be married to a zookeeper? Well, it's really wonderful. After 31 years of married life, I think I can say that. Uh -huh. uh, you see, I love animals, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, matter of fact, that's really what brought us together. Oh, I see. Well, that sounds like an interesting story. Uh, what is the story, Mike? Well, it, it happened this way. We met at uh, a church dance. And, of course, anyone that's around me has to listen to me talk about animals yeah. sooner or later. Yeah. Well, usually, uh, folks walk away after a while, but she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, that sounds like it would lead to an unusual courtship, uh, was it? <laughs> oh, it was very romantic. Yes. He uh, would call for me on his motorcycle, and yes. we would go out into the countryside and <laughs> look at various animals and study their habits, yes. chase a few snakes and lizards. <laughs> 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 they, they're my kind of people, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> well, now, Mike, uh, were you in zoo work in those days? Uh, no, no. We moved up to Oregon on a, on a farm and proceeded to raise a family. And how big a family do you have now, Thelma? Well, Edgar, I like to answer that question this way. Uh, I brought into the world two girls, a boy, and three chickens. Some crazy mixed-up litter. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you mind explaining that just a little, Thelma? Well, uh, after the birth of my last daughter, yes. I was bedridden for about six weeks. I see. And uh, on a dare, my husband brought the uh, three eggs that a hen had deserted mm. into me to hatch. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> I proceeded to lay on them until they hatched. <laughs> well, Mike, I'd say for a zookeeper, you really married the right woman, don't you think so? You bet I'm fortunate. She, she really loves animals. Fact of the matter is, she even talks to them. Talks to animals? Mm -hmm. Do you talk to animals, Selva? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Well, next time you see a skunk, ask him what's the big idea. <laughs> Thelma, would you mind giving us a little demonstration of, uh, of this talking? You know, for example, how would you talk to a chicken? The ones you're your mother of. <laughs> well, I'm no expert on this, no. but it uh, would go something like this. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that good? Yeah, oh, it's real good, yeah. Oh. But uh, where's the egg? No, no, oh, no, no. <laughs> now, Thelma, how would you talk to, uh, oh, say, to a bear or an elephant? Well, Mr. Bergen, it really isn't that you try to imitate the sound of an animal. It's uh, the tone of voice you use mm, I that makes them understand you. Mike, you find this to be true? Oh, surely truth? that's true. All us people that are in the animal business, work with animals, know that, and we practice it. As someone said, it isn't the words you use, uh, but a soothing, uh, a soft, soothing voice will, will soothe a, a scared or a, yeah. a, a, a excited animal. Yes. Well, as chief animal keeper, you ought to know. Now tell us, uh, what are some of your big problems in running a zoo? Well, we have lots of them, but I think one of the greatest is some of the questions that the public ask us. Mm -hmm. uh, they call up on the telephone and they want to know whether the zebra is black with white stripes or white with black stripes, mm -hmm. or does an elephant smell with his trunk, or is, is there a snake that really milks a cow? I bet he could once he got the hang of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike, I've heard that April Fool's Day is one of your worst days at the zoo. Is that true? It certainly is. There's always somebody that's calling up and uh, asking or inquiring for people with animal names. For instance, mm -hmm. Mr. Lion. <laughs> and, of course, that's so bad on April Fool's Day that we have to have the phone disconnected. I see. Well, well why don't you just tell them that the lion is busy? <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 was, that was pretty good. Yeah. Well, you know, we always have trouble on the farm, too, on April Fool's Day. Well, what kind of trouble? <laughs> oh, those, uh, those darn kids are always doing tricks, you know. They, well, what do they do? Well, they, they keep tilting our isolation booth. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Thelma, did you ever help uh, Mike with his work? Um, yes, uh, matter of fact, he uh, brings the work home to me sometimes. Hey. One time he brought home a pair of black leopard uh, cubs that the mother had deserted at birth, mm -hmm. and uh, I got up all hours of the night, filled the baby bottles and fed them, took care of them till they were about six months old. Oh, I see. Say, hey, we could have used you on our farm last month, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, my mama pig, yeah, well, she had 13 babies, see? And, uh, of course, she was mighty busy, yeah. She must have been a proud mother. Well, she was embarrassed, I see. She, you see, she could only set places for 12, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> well, I tell you, around mealtime, it was a very busy snack bar. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, Mike... Uh, Let's go back to this case. Your home must be a little bit like a miniature zoo, isn't it? It certainly has. We've had everything around there from cub bears, baby raccoons, all different kind of birds. Like 
One time we even had a boa constrictor 10 feet long. Oh, wow. yes, and we always name our animals, too. Yeah. The boa constrictor's name was Harriet. Harriet, yeah. And uh, we had a bear, Josie, a Bobby Coon. And at one time, we had a duck we called Mortimer. Oh. <laughs> well, they've said I'm from the birds, yes, yeah. <laughs> well, Mike and Thelma, it's been fun talking with you. Now it's time to play Do You Trust Your Wife? And it's good to know that the Griffith Park animals are in such good hands, and we know they are. Maybe Mortimer and I will drop out and see you sometime, won't we? Well, I don't believe I'd care to do that. I see. I don't care for zoos very much. Why? Well, it's the darndest thing. Last time I went, <laughs> the monkeys kept throwing peanuts at me. Oh, they do? <laughs> well, well, good luck. Mr. and Mrs. Webb, you can win up to $1,200 in cash tonight on your way to our trust fund question. Your first correct answer is worth $100. Zedger, here are the Wentz questions. Thank you. Will you go to the board, please? Mike, we want to see what you know about your wife. Mike, when Thelma was born, was she a big baby, a little baby, or just medium? And write little, medium, or big. And Thelma, you write your size at birth. Big, little, or medium. He wrote big, and she wrote big. You now have $100. Your next correct answer will be worth $200. The subject of your second question is national emblems. Do you trust your wife? I trust my wife. <laughs> For what country is the fleur de lis the national emblem? I believe that's France. That is France. You now have three hundred dollars. Your next correct answer will be worth three hundred dollars. The subject of your third question is mathematics. Do you trust your wife? Yes, yeah, I trust my wife. <laughs> What name is given the line between the center of a circle and the curve? The radius. That is right, radius. Is right. <laughs> Edgar, Mr. and Mrs. Wendt have won $600. You may now risk all of it, none of it, or part of it on our board questions. And do you wish to select a category? I'll take the $300 question, Edgar. And do you trust yourself or do you trust your wife? I'll try that one. I'll trust myself. All right. Why is there a gap between the rails of a railway track? Oh, to take care of the expansion, yes. the heat expansion. That is exactly right. <laughs> and the Wentz have a grand total of $900. And now it's time for our trust fund question. We will place in trust with the world's largest bank, the Bank of America in California. A trust fund which will pay tonight's winning couple $100 a week for an entire year. Back tonight to try for $100 a week for a fourth year, our construction company technician, Eric Good and his wife, Elena. For the fourth time, welcome Elena and Eric. I see your good luck rooting section is still with you tonight here. Yes, uh, and we've gained another volunteer sitter. That's Eric's mother holding Carl. She's really rooting for us. She's the one who helped us with the down payment on our house. Well, I see why. <laughs> well, Elena, other than being $16,800 richer, how are you surviving all this hubbub? Weaker by the week. <laughs> but it's such a nice way to go, isn't it? Oh, yes. It? Are we still keeping your mailman busy, Eric? Gosh, yes. We're getting letters from friends from all over the country. Oh, In fact, this morning I got a 10-page special delivery letter from an old classmate of mine at Annapolis. Ten pages. Well, here's not a man of few words. No, he had lots to say. He congratulated me for having married such a pretty girl, uh -huh. for having three children, and of course for having won so much money on your show. Well, how nice. He also asked me to please return the ten dollars I borrowed from him when we were plebes together. <laughs> oh, I well, I suppose he enclosed a special delivery self-addressed envelope, too. No, the mail was too slow for him. He wanted me to run right down to Western Union and wire in the 10 bucks, <laughs> which I did. Another touching story of the power of TV. Come on, do you trust your wife and have all your old classmates done you? <laughs> but enough of this $10 talk. Are you too ready now to try for another $5,200? Yes. Well then, Bob Lamont, who are tonight's winners to compete against the goods? To compete with the goods is tonight's winning couple with $900, Mike and Thelma Wentz. The 
subject for tonight's trust fund question is United States geography. Edgar, here is that question. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, you've heard the category. There's a lot of money at stake. Do you trust yourself or do you trust your wife? I hope you make the right choice. In a few seconds, our couples will match wits in the big trust fund question. But right now, here are two people who've learned to live modern and smoke modern with L&M Miracle Tip. Why don't you live modern? Smoke an L&M. Free up. Freshen up your taste. Live modern. Smoke modern. Smoke L&M. Enjoy full, exciting flavor through the L&M Miracle Tip. Pure white inside, pure white outside. L&M draws easier, tastes richer, smokes cleaner. So freshen up your taste. Change to L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Eric Good, do you trust yourself or do you trust your wife? Oh, I trust myself. And Mike Gwent, do you trust yourself or do you trust your wife? I trust my wife. Oh, all right. <laughs> Will you go to the board, please? You'll have 20 seconds to answer this question. It's worth $100 a week for a year, and the winner can come back and perhaps make enough to retire for life. This may be the most important answer you will ever have to give. You have 20 seconds, so think clearly, write fast, get your pen ready. Here is the question. On the board is a list of 10 states. Some are among the 10 largest inland area. Some are not. When I say go, write T for true after each state that, ha that is among the 10 largest inland area. And F for false after those that are not. That's T for true and F for false. Are you ready? Go. <laughs> Are the correct answers. Florida, false. Illinois, false. Wyoming, true. Arizona, true. Arkansas, false. Colorado, true. New Mexico, true. Montana, true. Tennessee, false. Wisconsin, false. The Wentz have four correct. And the Goods have eight correct. The Goods are our trust fund winners with $100 a week every week for a fourth year. Try for $100 a week for what year will it be? Five. Now? Five years. <laughs> Would you please? Yes, we sure will. Right. We'll Thank see you, you next week. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us tonight. And don't forget, we have a date next week at the same time to find out whether tonight's trust fund champions, Eric and Helena Good, will win $100 a week for the fifth year, or will there be a new champion? Now, do you trust your wife? You Trust Your Wife will be brought to you by L&M. Get full, exciting flavor through the pure white miracle tip. Live modern. Smoke L&M. And now it's time to say goodnight to Charlie McCarthy. Good night. Mortimer Smith. Well, you too. And Edgar Bergen. See you next week, folks. Do You Trust Your Wife? Brought to you by the Frigidaire Division of General Motors and the Frigidaire dealers in your community.